right, welcome back, friends. Thanks for being here. A couple of weeks ago, Sterling, Kyle, Ape, and myself all put together the QRP Guys tri-band antenna. There's going to be a link down below to that video. Uh, we did it live with a whole bunch of you guys watching. Really appreciate you being there. And we're looking forward to doing another project on camera that we all build. Not sure what it's going to be yet, but stay tuned to this space and we will get you some more information on that as it comes out. So when the antenna was done, you still had to build, well, when the video was done, you still had to cut some ground radials, four, and you had to cut the vertical element, and then you had to do a little bit of tuning because the, um, the wraps on the toroids weren't really precise. A couple of you guys had mentioned that in the chat while we were on camera, but there's not much I can do about it on camera without having any kind of test equipment or test rigging set up. So I went ahead and finished the thing, cut some antenna wire and some ground radials, strung it up in a tree, and ran it on the antenna tester. Did pretty good on 20 meters, because obviously the element was cut for 20 meters. And then there was some trouble on uh, both 30 meters and on 40 meters, which is where the toroids are. So the process for fixing this is to unwind a couple of wraps on the 30 meter toroid and get that one working. And then once that one is done, solder it down into place and then start doing the same thing on the 40 meter toroid and get that one all into place. I got all that done. It was actually pretty cool. What I was doing was watching a couple of the Thursday night ham radio videos and the Friday night ham radio videos that the crew put out while working at the bench and checking in with the premier chat and live stream chat. So that was a lot of fun to be working on a ham radio project while watching some ham radio videos. It's good to have that content out there and made the time go by pretty smoothly. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of a hassle putting the antenna up, testing it, bringing it down, making some modifications, putting the antenna up, testing it, but it turned out to be okay. Something to do to pass the time. Um, at the end of the day, I'd probably do it again. It was a lot of fun. So coming up is a voiceover and some live camera action of me taking this antenna apart, unwinding the toroids, putting them back together, and doing some testing. And at the end of it, there's a little bit of a blooper, so stick around to the end. And hope you enjoy it. And I will put a link to a sample QSO that this antenna made right after I put it together down in the description below as well. You might have already seen it. I kind of let it sneak out. So stay tuned. Oh, and again, YouTube makes me ask you guys to hit that like button, comment button, subscribe, all that stuff down below, and ring the bell, and all that stuff that keeps you coming back to YouTube for more ham radio content. So, see you after the break. So the first thing we got to do in order to do some fine tuning is do some coarse tuning. And the only way to do some coarse tuning is to actually put the antenna together. I know that's a little weird, but uh, first thing we got to do is get some man sewing done. This is the strain relief for hoisting this thing up into the tree so that all of your weight is not right on the mounting stud. And. Uh, these are my wire strippers that have been in my family for at least three generations that I know of. And of course, the first thing you do is put it in the wrong size die and it doesn't work. And then you put it in the right size die and it doesn't work. And here I'm going to put a terminal on the end of it. Probably don't need a terminal. I'm just making it that much nicer. Check to make sure that fork fits on that screw terminal and it does. So we'll do a little bit of twisting here, get this thing installed. So remember, crimp first, then solder. This will come up later. I think this is the crimp tool that everybody has. And it's really not all that great. I tried to get a nicer one. It didn't work out. Pull out my helping hands here, 
because I need four hands to do this project. One to hold the solder, one to hold the soldering iron, one to hold the end of the wire, and one to say a prayer to make sure I get this thing done right. So I put a little bit of solder on the tip of the soldering iron so that you get a good solid heating connection between the tip of the iron and the spade connector and the wire. And right when it gets heated up enough, you just feed some solder in. It's so satisfying just to feed that solder in. Oh, I love doing that. And one of the neat things about doing this is that it heats up the little red sleeve on the spade connector and reforms it after you have deformed it with that crimp tool. Go ahead and get this thing on the stud right now. And then we will do a little bit of fine tuning after we get this wire pulled back through. This is a 17 foot piece of DX10 that I'm using for the vertical element. And the way this antenna works is 17 feet is your 20 meter vertical. We'll do a little bit of a fine tuning adjustment on the way that looks. Not much you can do because that spade connector is pretty big. And we'll give it a little test. Hey, look, it does the thing. So this is a quarter wave on 20 meters, and then it's got two toroids on it, one for 30 meters, and then you put a second toroid in place for 40 meters. So you're running both toroids on 40 meters, just one on 20 meters. And then this is a trick that I picked up from Cal when building all the radials for the DX Commander. We're gonna put all these together under one spade connector. These guys all married up nice and pretty. And I'm thinking I'm gonna need some heat shrink. We'll try this yellow stuff. And then I don't really like how the ends of the wire itself doesn't fit not the, not the copper part, but the black plastic jacket doesn't fit inside of the spade connector's little plastic. So I'm gonna rip that piece of plastic off. And the shrink wrap will take care of making that nice and pretty when we're all done. Remember that thing I said about crimp first, then solder? Yeah, here's where I don't do that. Oh, just feed that solder in. All right, let's get the heat shrink tubing all heat shrunk. my everyday carry pocket lighter. I carry a lighter with me, but I don't smoke. I live on a farm, so there's always something that needs to be burnt. Starting to grill, starting a campfire. And the secret to doing heat shrink tubing with a lighter is not to get the flame on the heat shrink tubing. And lots and lots of patience. That's all done. Let's get this workbench cleaned up. Trash in the trash can, tools get put away. Radials out of the way. Roll up the solder back onto the solder reel. All right, there you have it. Go get this thing out in the field and rigged up. So this is a trick that I learned back in my sailing days. You take the excess sheet 
and you do this little loop job with it. And if you do it right, it does this little trick. And I basically, basically leave this up all year long and test all kinds of antennas that I build. And so that extra line might come in handy someday, it might not, but it's easier to leave the cord on than it is to cut it. And this is the vertical strung up in the tree. And this made it really easy to hoist that antenna up for testing purposes and lower it back down to make some changes into a couple quick antenna sweeps. So this is just that straight 17 foot cut, a little teeny loop over at the top and looks pretty good on 20 meters. And then this is on 10 meters, might be a little hard to see, but if you look real close, you can see that the left hand side is just under three to one and then it starts to climb up on the right hand side. Perfectly tunable with the built-in tuner on the 7300. Uh, but this one, this one was not. It's above three to one all across the 40 meter band. So we got some work to do. And the tuning procedure for this is to start unwrapping the toroids. So I am desoldering the toroid and pulling a wrap out. And what I found is that one turn removed is 0.2 kilocycles. So if it was at 9.1 and I removed one turn, it would then be at 10 point, whoa, no, 9.1, remove one turn. Don't do math on camera, folks. Two kilocycles, 2.2 2 kilocycles away. And basically what I wound up doing was removing four turns on one toroid and five turns on the other. And all you do is pull it out, solder it back, pull it out, solder it back, pull it out, solder it back. You don't need to pull it out, trim it, pull the sheath off, put it back on. This is what it looked like after tuning. We are at 7200 with 1.2 to 1. That's pretty good. That's right smack in the middle of the phone portion of the 40 meter band. And that's good for generals. And then this is the 30 meter band. That's fantastic. That's the middle of the 30 meter band, which is very tiny to begin with. So you can imagine it's resonant all the way across. And then when it was done, this is 20 meters. Not really happy with this but I don't want to trim the wire any, and I don't want to uh, rewind toroids, so we're gonna let the tuners figure that one out. The radio will be able to handle the two to one. Anyway, this is what it looks like all done. Is it recording now? It's recording now, okay, good. <laughs> so what I like to do with my extra bit of rope, sheet, cord, line, whatever you call this stuff, is uh, tie it off in this sort of cable fashion, cable stitch fashion, kind of knitting or crocheting fashion. It's something I learned in sailing, and if you do it right, you can just pull. Until you screw it up. <laughs> and then it's a beast. <laughs> 